Hello, everybody. We are here live for the Pranic Festival online with my dear friend Adam Apollo, an intergalactic ambassador and the being of light that I cherish so much. And it's so great to collaborate every time we meet. And uh, we're having a great time today speaking about intergalactic cultures and technologies. Bună ziua tuturor! Suntem aici cu Adam Apollo, un coleg și prieten vechi și tare drag mie. Și astăzi vorbim despre culturi și tehnologii intergalactice. Asta, that has been his field of research, among others, for, I think, more than 20 or 30 years, even though he's very young still, <laughs> but he's an ancient soul. And uh, he's going to tell us more about it. So please do feel free to start wherever you feel to 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 address this topic. Mm, thank you so much <laughs> for having me live with you, Christiana. And yeah, I, you know, can't say can't say 30 years exactly, though I was um, really only about six or seven the first time I saw something in the sky that I couldn't explain. And uh, the massive ball of light that came down towards me as I walked around this little lake um, shook me deeply. Like I, I felt something and I wasn't scared. It wasn't, um, I wasn't afraid, but it was so unlike anything I'd ever experienced. I literally thought it might have been a dream days later. And I had to ask my mom, you know, did I come back inside you know, the other night and say, I just saw this huge thing. She's like, yeah, you saw something. <laughs> and, you know, that was, um, that was over 30 years ago. Yeah. That's how <laughs> and, I remember uh, it. <laughs> yeah. So, but it really was. And until, you know, I was, um, going into college, Asheville, North Carolina, I ended up meeting a gentleman who brought me a tape of, uh, the recordings from the national press club conference in Washington, DC, uh, that had Stephen Greer and members huh. of the Disclosure Project presenting. And it turned out Stephen came to Asheville just a few months after that. And I had a chance to meet him. I met huh. a lot of people in the sort of science of looking at the fact that we're not alone mm. and the raw data around that. Mm. And I knew for sure that we couldn't be. I mean, if you just run the Drake equation, which I'd done in high school, you know, even if you're really, 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 really contracting how much planets can develop life and consciousness and all of that kind of thing, you still end up with thousands of intelligent civilizations across our galaxy alone. Uh, now, that I was in days like when we really just thought that like, out of all the stars in the galaxy, there might be like one to 10% of them that even have planets. And there might be another like 0.1% that can bear life. And then there could be like 0.1% of those that actually evolves life. But now we actually believe that 99% or more of stars have planetary systems uh -huh. and that over half of those, at least, at least half have planets that can bear life. And that means a wow. hundred billion life bearing planets in our galaxy, Woo! just our galaxy. <laughs> I should right? translate so that I don't forget the numbers. Oh, yes, of course. So, so empowering to hear that. Deci, eu am spus că Adam se ocupă de această cercetare a civilizațiilor intergalactice de peste 30 de ani. Și, și deși este foarte tânăr încă, dar încă de la șase ani el a avut această experiență de a vedea ceva neidentificat și a, o, o sferă mare de lumină și a mers și a întrebat pe mama lui în casă, a doua zi, dacă nu cumva a intrat seara și le-a povestit despre această sferă de lumină, pentru că nu mai era sigur dacă o percepuse sau nu. Mama lui a confirmat că, într-adevăr, această sferă și discuția dintre ei s-a purtat și apoi a mers și a primit niște înregistrări de la un congres la care participase și doctorul Stephen Greer și la care a, 
aflat mai multe despre aceste civilizații și acum spune el că nu mai este nicio posibilitate ca noi să ne îndoim de existența unor civilizații extra și intraterestre. Pe vremuri se considera că nu există viață pe alte planete, după care s-a descoperit că există viață pe câteva planete, iar acum s-a descoperit că există viață pe 99% dintre planetele existente, deci peste un bilion de planete au uh, viață, uh, forme de viață pe ele. Yes. Yeah, great. So, after that, I felt very certain that we weren't alone but it was still a conceptual idea like a lot of us have this sense that there are other beings out there that we're not alone maybe we've had ephemeral moments we've had sightings we've seen craft in the sky i mean if you really pay attention to the sky it's pretty hard not to see something you can't explain at some point it's true um Do you want to translate that first and I'll go on? Deci spune că în momentul ăsta suntem siguri că nu suntem singuri și avem destule dovezi în această direcție și tot ce trebuie să faci este să te uiți la cer. Dacă te uiți la cer cu atenție, vei vedea suficiente dovezi că există această uh, posibilitate ca tu să întâlnești alte ființe și este o, o activitate destul de intensă și ca să confirm noi aici în Bucegi, lângă Sphinx, înregistrăm uh, foarte frecvent uh, imagini cu nave care sunt deasupra sau nave ascunse în nori sau uh, fascicule de lumină. So to confirm that here near the Sphinx of Romania, we very often record, uh, you know, film Uh, either ships flying above the mountains or uh, orbs of light or uh, ships cloaked in clouds. So it's very frequent. It's like a, a cosmic show here where I live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so essentially, at that point, I ended up going on these prayer runs for world peace with a bunch of indigenous elders I got looped into fire ceremonies and met Orville Looking Horse, smoked, smoked the White Buffalo Peace Pipe, met hundreds of indigenous elders from around the world, and ran with a bunch of indigenous youth across the country to White Buffalo Peace Day ceremony, the World Peace Prayer Day ceremonies that happen summer solstice. And mm -hmm. that was the 10th annual World Peace Prayer Day that had happened. And after that, I ended up on a path of experiences that led me out into the middle of the desert. And I ended up meeting an extraterrestrial being in person. Ooh, and that experience changed my life completely. <laughs> uh, el spune că de-a lungul tiner primilor ani ai adolescenței și tinereții, a mers uh, cu... Uh, mai mulți tineri prin țară și, uh, și în Canada, la uh, rugăciunile pentru pace care se întâmplau. Cea mai importantă dintre ele a fost uh, a zecea, uh, al zecelea Consiliu de rugăciuni pentru pace cu uh, înțelepții din uh, diverse triburi amerindiene, cu tot felul de oameni foarte avansați spiritual care făceau aceste ritualuri pentru pace și după a zecea întâlnire a acestor rugăciuni pentru pace care a avut loc la solstițiul de vară a avut o experiență foarte interesantă undeva în deșert unde a întâlnit o ființă dintr-un alt rând, o ființă extraterestră. Can't wait to hear about that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Your story with this beautiful lady. Yeah, well, it's a long story. So mm -hmm. people that want the full uh, version of it should watch my two episodes on Gaia uh, mm -hmm. called Interviews with ED, which is by Ruben Langdon. Yeah. And those two episodes cover my experience in depth. But I will say that that for me was the beginning of a new kind of journey as a scientist, as a thinker, as a CEO of a tech company, mm -hmm. <laughs> as I eventually became. Mm -hmm. And 
I began to really seriously look at who are the beings out there in the galaxy? Who am I? Where did we all come from? And where are we going as a species? And that involved years and years of having contact experiences, calling in ships, asking them questions, looking at visions that I'd had around certain technologies and discovering and healing by connecting with other people in my life and inevitably realizing that I'm from some of these other worlds and mm -hmm. so are most of my friends so and that we ended up here a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we have an ancient history and that was the same uh, way we felt when we met. Like, <clears throat> I remember you were sitting at a table at the Global Congress for Spiritual Scientists and I came in for dinner and you are like, I know you. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, I know, but we've never met in this lifetime. So it's yeah, that it knowing, that, that gaze, that knowing that you instantly get from people whom you've collaborated with for a long time, whom you've had beautiful sharings, hopefully for a long time, that you yeah. instantly know when you meet. And we should all pay attention to this because those are yeah. usually the beginnings of fantastic collaborations on this lifetime if we are open right. to it and if we you know <clears throat> um, pass, bypass all the other things that your mind can say uh, right. Adam spune că a avut o întâlnire în deșert cu această ființă intergalactică o ființă de gen feminin mai multe detalii despre întâlnirea cu această ființă primiți dacă urmăriți pe Gaia episoadele cu interviuri cu intergalactici. Gaia TV este un post care um, oferă tot felul de conferințe holistice, documentare holistice și acolo Adam a povestit experiența lui. O să-l întrebăm și noi câteva lucruri totuși. Și după această întâlnire, care a fost foarte puternică și foarte profundă, el a început o călătorie transformațională extraordinară, în care a devenit directorul unei companii de tehnologie, a, devenit, a, a vorbit la Casa Albă, a vorbit la Națiunile Unite, a avut foarte multe uh, conferințe și participări la diverse evenimente, care toate aveau la bază această întrebare. Cine suntem noi? De ce suntem aici? Cum putem ajuta umanitatea? Asta este principala lui uh, direcție și încă acum tot cu asta se ocupă. Iar uh, mai important decât atât este că noi și a devenit interesat și de istoria intergalactică a vieților lui, dar și în corelație cu alți prieteni pe care i-a întâlnit și care uh, au împărtășit amintiri similare din alte vieți, în alte galaxii sau pe alte planete. Și a constatat că noi avem, practic, multe puncte comune când ne întâlnim din nou în această viață. Am povestit că și noi ne-am întâlnit la fel la Congresul Global de Științe Spirituale. Am venit către masa lui și el a spus din start, te cunosc. Și eu i-am spus, da, știu, dar nu ne-am întâlnit până acum în această viață. Dar dacă suntem atenți la acea privire, la acea intensitate care se creează între doi oameni când se recunosc, aceea poate fi începutul unei colaborări extraordinare și a unei, unui lucru extraordinar care se reia, practic, în viața de acum. And because our audience, not all of them are connected to Gaia, you know, Romania is still learning about this channel. I'm one of the promoters that says everybody, go on Gaia, look at the documentaries. Could you tell us just briefly how that meeting was? Because there's so many people here that are so eager to meet such a being or to at least know how it feels, how it is, how you can have that experience. You know, they're literally standing up the mountains, waving, please, <laughs> please yeah. come in. You know, there's, come down. there's people in the audience that are literally doing that. So they would be yeah. really happy if they heard a little bit of your story. Sure, <laughs> sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I can say that... Um what facilitated that being able to happen was me going through some of the most profound healing I'd ever been through in my life. Um, and I believe that, that the entire journey of my life leading to that moment, I could see how all of the pieces fit in a puzzle together. 
to humble me, get me out of my own way, get me really grounded, enable me to have an experience, you know, working with indigenous peoples, getting to know my own roots in that way, my own indigenous roots under the Celtic lineage and the Tuatha de Danann, as I would eventually discover. Mm -hmm. And as I got more grounded and more capable, I think I was able to go through these healings. And the two healings that led directly to the experience was with my mother and with my father from the age of Atlantis, mm. from the time when I first came to this planet. Mm -hmm. And I'd had past life memories since college. I had been tracking and mapping them. I created somewhat of a transpersonal psychology project to oh. track and study the data of different people's memories that remembered me and me remembering them. I love and that. when I finally met my mother and father from Atlantis, um, there was some massive healing that happened. And I got in touch with the soul contract that I made with my sister when I was Syrian, when I was from another world. <laughs> and I had the first memory of being from another world, the first really clear memory I'd ever experienced. And suddenly it shifted everything inside of me to, instead of I'm going out to meet extraterrestrial beings or aliens or beings from somewhere else, mm -hmm. instead I had this passionate desire to go meet my family my star family, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And so out in the middle of the desert, I went through a whole series of ceremonial rituals, you could say. Mm -hmm. And they were simple, small, little changes in my perception, in myself. And when I got to a certain point in that journey without giving too much details, mm -hmm. um, she literally appeared in front of me. And, and you could have thought she walked up or she moved up. I have no idea. <laughs> um, and I was not the only person who saw her. There was other people around in this area, in the desert, at this art piece. And this couple guys who were essentially, you know, from somewhere deep in the mountains of Western North Carolina, you know, wearing mm -hmm. chainsaw hat, you know, <laughs> what what uh, Americans affectionately refer to as rednecks, which is somewhat <laughs> derogatory, but farming guys, you know, from the mm -hmm. backwoods Farmers. in the South, mm -hmm. they'd be proud of that term personally. Mm -hmm. And they saw her too. And it was shocking for everybody, anybody who saw her, nobody really understood what they were looking at. Mm -hmm. But when she spoke to me, she spoke to me telepathically, blasting my mind with her consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it was so clear. It was as if somebody dropped a virtual reality headset on me and I was <laughs> inside the vision of what she was communicating to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pause there. And Thank you. That uh, a spus că el pentru a avea această întâlnire, chiar fără să aștepte această întâlnire, dar uh, ce a dus la acest contact intergalactic a fost o serie de vindecări pe care el le-a făcut cu el însuși. A lucrat foarte mult cu el însuși pentru a-și vindeca anumite traume, anumite dureri, în special cele care aveau legătură cu mama și tatăl lui dintr-o viață în Atlantis. Și uh, el a chiar a dezvoltat o formă de terapie transpersonală în care a reușit să colecteze amintiri și chiar să vindece traume comune între el și diversi prieteni, diversi recunoștințe pe care le-a recunoscut din alte vieți și cu care apoi au discutat și au, avut, au constatat că au amintiri comune și experiențe comune din viețile respective. Deci, prin această terapie transpersonală în care a analizat alte vieți în alte galaxii, a mai multor prieteni de lui colerați cu el, a reușit să-și vindece și această traumă cu mama și tatăl lui din Atlantis, pe care i-a cunoscut în această viață și fiind conștient de importanța acestei întâlniri cu cei dragi din alte vieți și vindecării cu cei dragi din alte vieți, a reușit să, să dezvolte, spuneam, această formă de vindecare. 
Apoi, după această experiență, a fost clar pentru el că mai important decât să încerce să se conecteze cu cine știe ce ființe din alte dimensiuni, cel mai important este să se conecteze cu familia sa intergalactică, cu cei cu care a trăit în alte vieți și a împărtășit lucruri în alte vieți. Și așa a ajuns să facă această experiență, deci după ce a făcut această serie de vindecări, a ajuns în deșert și această ființă feminină, dar din altă dimensiune, s-a materializat efectiv în fața lui, și nu a fost singurul care a văzut-o, ci au mai fost și alți doi fermieri, care sunt niște oameni destul de împământați, destul de nu foarte conectați la chestiile holistice și au putut să vadă mai multe persoane, ceea ce înseamnă că era într-o, în realitatea mai multor spectatori care au participat la această întâlnire și o să ne povestească un pic din întâlnirea propriu-zisă. Thank you for sharing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And once I was in communication with her, um, it was very profound. Her, her level of awareness moved me. So when she thought to me, I know who you are, She projected into my mind and I was suddenly on a starship and I was looking down at a planet. I was docking with a giant mothership. I was coming down to this beautiful city, like landing among the pyramids mm. and and coming to Earth. And there was all of these flashes mm-hmm. of moments And the last one, I was standing in a stone circle and I raised a sword up and a light beam shoots down at me from a ship and bounces off all my armor and off of all these knights and priestesses standing around me and all the light is just reflecting back and forth in this circle of stone. And that was like the last one. Mm. And that was clearly me on earth. And it was overwhelming in my heart, the emotion of feeling this being so powerful, seeing me so deeply, like, and, and to my core. And I just was so thankful. Um, And I I was overwhelmed with gratitude for a moment. Mm -hmm. And she turned at that moment and looked over at the two guys that I, you know, called (laughs) charmingly called rednecks um (laughs) and she looks back at me and she says in my mind not all of you are ready oh (laughs) and I saw what she showed me was like one of these guys and he's pissed and he's fighting his dad and then Mm -hmm. he's signing up for the military Mm -hmm. and then he's getting his head shaved And he's handed a gun and he's working out. And now he has to shoot at people. And mm. then, you know, he's listening to heavy metal and he's driving war a tank vibration. and he's shooting yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's showing me war, mm. you know? Uh, know. And, <laughs> and I, I felt it and it hurt, you know, it hurt deeply. And also at the same time, it was so perfect that it was this couple of guys, you know, from the woods in Western North Carolina, probably, which is like where I grew up. <laughs> no. um because i you know i partied with those guys that you mm-hmm. know their archetype i did mm-hmm. keg stands at their parties you know and and i i saw how much they struggled mm-hmm. with the way that life had forced them into this particular role yeah. and like that a lot of times it was abuse and a lot of times it was them escaping abuse or being oh, sent yeah. off to the military because they wouldn't do what dad said mm-hmm. and i felt that pain and i And I sent to her this sort of sense of awareness and how much I actually loved those guys for being there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because if they weren't there, then I I don't know. I would have probably thought I was hallucinating, right? And- But because they were there, I knew that I was having this experience and it was so grounding to have them there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I felt so much gratitude and love for these guys and said into her with my mind, visualizing all these people that I've met around the world that I knew are ready 
for mm -hmm. this already for this oh, big yeah. transition and I said and enough of us are oh yeah <laughs> and she looks at me um and I'll, I'll pause there she's just looking at me for a second with a smile on her face <laughs> I, I I was just entering that state, you know, because now I feel all of us are all of us that have said yes at some point, said yes to evolution. All of us now are so ready. Like we yeah. are so ready. We we are readier than ever. <laughs> That's why I was That's entering right. the state of, oh God, we're just hear us out. We are so ready. Yeah. And I've had a clear uh, guidance this 11-11 last year that we are done with struggling by ourselves. We are now ready to receive help. All we need to do is ask. If 10 of us are asking, that's what I was told, with right. pure heart, with pure intention, the planet is shifting totally and it's constantly going to get help from our you know, friends because now we said yes, right? Yeah. And then in 1212, I received this data that we have we have completed the contracts that weren't beneficial for this planet. And from now on, we're only in collaboration that are based on love. So all our collaboration with all our intergalactic, you know, whatever we we're meeting, we are, yeah. are supposed to now be based on love and mutual respect, mutual helpful, mutual beneficial relationship as opposed to what has been before this has been completed so we are now free <laughs> that's why i was so happy hearing you i'm going to translate all this <laughs> okay. go ahead. Uh, i'll take a break yeah go ahead <laughs> Am spus că a spus că această ființă comunica cu el într-un mod telepatic și îi transmitea telepatic ideile ei i-a transmis imagini spunându-i eu te cunosc atât de bine și a transmis imagini din mai multe vieți ale lui pe mai multe planete, în mai multe zone în care avea diverse roluri pe o navă, pe o platformă care ateriza într-un într oraș cu foarte multe piramide, în altă navă, într-o zonă în care era pe pământ și ridica o sabie ca un mesaj de contact și o o, o rază de lumină a venit prin sabia lui, prin corpul lui și apoi s-a reflectat în cerc către toți participanții la adunarea în care se afla aici pe pământ. Toate aceste flashuri erau din diverse vieți în care ființa de lumină din fața lui îi arăta viețile în care s-au cunoscut, practic. Și în același timp erau acești doi fermieri care nu erau interesați deloc de viața holistică și care o puteau vedea, aveau niște reacții un pic ciudate și în același timp ea s-a uitat la ei cu foarte multă compasiune și a arătat niște imagini în care unul dintre ei particip, se înrola pentru război, își rădea părul, primea tot felul de arme cu care urma să facă ravagii, asculta o muzică foarte haotică și era într-o vibrație foarte puternică de război și de luptă. Și i-a spus telepatic, arătându-i acele imagini despre luptă, i-a spus și nu toți sunteți pregătiți pentru contact. Iar Adam s-a uitat la cei doi uh, indivizi care întâmplător erau chiar din zona în care el crescuse și a început să simtă iubire pentru ei. A început să-și amintească că el a mers la petreceri când era mic cu astfel de colegi de distracție și că făcea tot felul de flicpacuri cu ei la aceste petreceri și că mulți dintre ei au fost abuzați sau forțați de familiile lor să intre în armată pentru că dacă nu făceai ce vroia tata, te trimitea la școala militară, cam așa e și acum în anumite zone, și că acea vibrație de luptă și de agresiune poate este cauza unor traume de familie și toată iubirea asta a transmis-o către ea și i-a arătat de asemenea telepatic comunicau, i-a arătat și imagini cu toți oamenii care sunt într-o stare de iubire, oamenii care sunt într-o stare de armonie, și a zis, uite, da, totuși mulți dintre noi sunt foarte pregătiți pentru a vă cunoaște. 
Și am făcut o pauză în care eu am adăugat că, da, într-adevăr, și eu simt că mulți dintre noi suntem foarte, foarte pregătiți acum și foarte nerăbdători, într-un fel, să intrăm în contact cu aceste ființe și pe 11 11 anul trecut am primit notificarea că dacă 10 dintre noi cer cu o inimă pură să ni se acorde ajutor, practic toată planeta trece pe un nou nivel de vibrație în care vom fi constant ajutați de forțele de lumină pentru a nu ne mai chinui de unii singuri, iar pe 12-12, după ce 10 dintre noi am cerut ajutor, am primit faptul că acum toate colaborările de pe planetă, colaborări intergalactice cu alte zone ale galaxiei, sunt toate bazate doar pe iubire. Deci doar contractele bazate pe iubire și ajutor reciproc mai sunt acum posibile. Și asta este viitorul. Asta este ce urmează să se întâmple de acum încolo. So, go ahead. What was the next phase of your meeting? <laughs> Or whatever you feel mm. here. <laughs> so, she, she just looks at me mm. and this little smile touches her lips. Mm. And then all of a sudden she like nods her head towards me and this wave hits me mm -hmm. and it brings all this love through my heart. Like it was like, a, it, you could feel it, you know, it was mm -hmm. like somebody pushes a wave of water at you, you know, in the ocean, mm -hmm. but it was a wave of emotion and feeling. And she said unto me, thank you for honoring your people. <laughs> and It came with this, like, uh, you know, I still get chills saying it. I still mm -hmm. feel all the goosebumps. It was such a powerful expression. It's so simple, but so loving and so full of acknowledgement and recognition. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I, I had this opportunity right then to, like, judge these guys and mm -hmm. to make somebody bad. Yes. But I didn't. Mm -hmm. I loved them instead. And I was grateful for them instead. And yeah. it was like I passed a test. <laughs> and sure. I could feel it. I felt like I passed a test. And I was so grateful. And I just bowed so deeply to her. I just like with my whole body just bowed. <laughs> and just sent her so much thank you for being there thank you for showing me thank you for thank you for this opportunity to know this is real <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um and and you know i didn't explain what she looked like but of mm -hmm. course she every homo erectus every human has this eyebrow ridge It ends about right here. There's always this bone right there. You can't get rid of it. It's at every human being. It's always mm -hmm. there. It doesn't matter what you do with makeup or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for her, it was back here. And so mm -hmm. this was more open and and wider. Her eyes were about the same size, maybe a little bit larger. She had these little bone points here and here and here. Mm -hmm. And it was very beautiful and long hair. And you could tell her ears were a little pointed out of her hair coming through you know same as and you she had this cowl of these robes on and the the edging of the robes had all of these little what look like glowing constellation patterns like mm. star patterns <laughs> and it was she was stunning you know mm -hmm. and when i bowed to her and i came back up she was gone <laughs> just gone <laughs> and you know and it took a minute for me just to even process that and then there was like the guy the the couple you know guys with chainsaw hats like look over and they like look around confused mm -hmm. um and you know i knew i knew that that was the beginning of an experience it wasn't really the end it was the beginning oh. for me of something much greater um, so i lost there a spus că această discuție a fost de fapt o oportunitate, iar prezența celor doi fermieri la fața locului a fost un test pentru el, pentru că putea să îi judece și să îi considere răi sau nepotriviți în acea întâlnire, dar în loc de asta el i-a iubit și le-a transmis iubire și i-a onorat, practic. 
Și uh, asta pentru ea a fost un semn și s-a înclinat în fața lui și i-a spus îți mulțumim că, ne onor că îți onorezi uh, poporul, nația, practic. Uh, și i-a transmis un val de iubire atât de profund și în același timp un val de respect atât de profund că până și acum are piele de găină când își amintește și ne-a descris și cum arăta. A spus că fața ei era practic diferită un pic, sprâncenele se duceau până un pic mai în spate, nu ca la noi unde se oprește osul acesta aici, ci un pic mai în spate, avea niște protuberanțe, proeminențe aici și în bărbie și la obraj care erau reliefate, era de o frumusețe extraordinară, avea părul lung, avea peste păr uh, și urechile un pic ascuțite și peste păr avea o robă foarte frumoasă cu uh, niște, să le spunem, șireturi, poate, care se prelungeau și toate erau constelații. Și tot aspectul ei era absolut uluitor și el s-a înclinat în fața ei după ce i-a transmis acest val de iubire iar când s-a ridicat, pur și simplu dispăruse, i-a văzut pe cei din jur că se uitau uimiți ca și cum nu știau unde, unde a dispărut și ce s-a întâmplat cu ea și uh, și-a dat seama că acea întâlnire este doar începutul unei călătorii, nu este o călătorie în sine, e începutul unei călătorii și că de fapt multe, multe, multe lucruri urmeau să se întâmple de atunci încolo, despre care o să ne spun acum. Ai... Feel so connected to the civilization that she's from. Did you learn which civilization she was from? Eventually, because you've studied so much. I feel connected yeah. to, as if I've been I've been there, you know. That's what I feel when you tell the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she's known as Tiara Danan, but mm -hmm. her species and her race was actually a mix of Syrian and Pleiadian And draconian and that mm -hmm. she was really in many ways sort of a representation of of that healing that has mm -hmm. happened in the galaxy for a very very long time um and what a perfect marker because a lot of my work would come to be about understanding the orion wars and mm -hmm. the time when i was back then when stuff really hit the fan and draconians were assaulting planets across the galaxy and mm. we had to deal with galactic war and that was a long time ago but the wounds of that have still lingered the karmic wounds and the sanskaric wounds and we're still dealing with a lot of those patterns here on this planet which causes mm -hmm. a lot of fear because people are afraid of that kind of thing resurfacing We're also educated to be afraid because media has finally released now the fact that there's other civilizations and they're available for us to contact, but uh, they are surrounding it in a cloak of fear and uh, war, which is what humans do, you know, boringly saying. <laughs> uh, I'm going to translate before I get uh, all grumpy. <laughs> Okay, don't get grumpy, translate instead. Okay. Uh, spunea că uh, eu am întrebat dacă a reușit să identifice din ce specie, din ce galaxie sau planetă provenea această ființă, uh, și pentru că el a studiat foarte mult despre speciile intergalactice de atunci încolo și a zis că era un mix, practic, între Tiara de Anan și alte specii, Sirius și Pleiade, practic, Fiind un, un mix hibrid între aceste civilizații, ea reprezenta cumva și energia vindecării dintre aceste civilizații care intergalactic au fost implicate într-un război, într-un conflict, războaiele din Orion și așa mai departe, acest conflict lăsând traume profunde chiar și asupra noastră a pământenilor care ne amintim sau avem în memoria celulară Uh, memorii ale acestei, acestei lupte care s-a purtat la nivel intergalactic și care încă și acum pentru noi se vindecă, deci au loc vindecări și multe din tiparele care sunt acum pe planetă uh, au legătură cu acele conflicte care au existat și practic odată ce ne vindecăm noi ieșim din acea zonă de frică, din acea zonă de... de de văl care că există între noi și alte civilizații, 
Iar eu am spus că am fost inclusiv educați să, aveam, să avem această frică, pentru că în sfârșit există o, o publicare a tuturor lucrurilor care au existat în ce privește contactul dintre noi și extraterestri. Au fost făcute publice documente, în mod oficial, de către guvernele noastre, dar totul a fost îmbrăcat într-o într haină a fricii, cum că trebuie să ne temem de ei și să ne luptăm cu ei, ceea ce este fals. All right. <laughs> What else do you feel to share? You know, I have thousands of questions, but I know you are channeling information, so I'm letting you play. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'll just say that, uh, again, that that was really the beginning for me um, mm -hmm. that led me on a journey into lots of things. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll share a few things just to kind of give your viewers a little idea. You know, mm -hmm. I, I began having very persistent contact experiences. And mm -hmm. I was given this sigil as a way to connect to this galactic community of beings. I mm -hmm. ended up essentially by locating into a galactic council chamber and meeting 73 different ambassadors of different species from around the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And I began to learn about these species. And of course, in that same night, I learned that and we went through a whole process in which it was clear that humanity is now ready to become part of this galactic community and that the rest of the galactic council essentially are here to ensure we don't kill ourselves along the way. They're here to make sure we <laughs> keep going and that we do it ourselves. And it's an, it's critical that we do it ourselves. You know what I mean? We have, if we want galactic community on earth, we have to build it ourselves. And The vision for it is already laid. I mean, Gene Roddenberry saw Star Trek. He saw that the future could be galactic schools. And when we extend this down to the role of an individual, you know, we start to imagine what it would be like to have a car that when you get in, you could go and say it's sunset. Well, you decide to go shoot across the planet, catch a sunrise somewhere mm -hmm. else, fly up to the poles and see the auroras, then go have some sushi on the beach in Tokyo, mm. and then shoot to the Pleiades and go and land for another sunset. You know, mm. I mean, you could literally go sunset chasing on different worlds, for God's <laughs> sakes, and then still come home in time for dinner, right? Yeah, that would be a great and date. I would, that you would know, be a great would... date. I would lovely, I would lovingly sign up for a date like that. You know? I'll take you on a date in this sweet car, flying car thing that I've got here. And, <laughs> and you can stare I, out the window and see humanity. I mean, the vision of humanity's future is so powerful if we recognize that really just changing our energy systems and changing our ability to travel, opening up the ability for travel technology, which is quantum gravity technologies, Yes. and replication all of a sudden you have all the keys of a civilization capable of stewarding and managing its planet yes I, i'll translate a uh, spune adam că acum începe o nouă călătorie pentru el și um, de multe ori după această întâlnire a fost proiectat într-un consiliu intergalactic în care a avut diverse discuții cu deci proiecția astrală, la asta se referă, în care a avut diverse discuții cu acest Consiliu, în care, practic, ei au dat acest simbol pe care, pe care ni l transmite și care este un simbol pentru contact intergalactic și au spus că, practic, ei sunt aici pentru a se asigura că noi nu ne distrugem planeta și nu ne omorâm între noi și Uh, a primit și tot felul de detalii despre tehnologii intergalactice care pot fi disponibile pentru noi și ne-a spus, imaginează cum ar fi să fii într-un vehicol pe care imediat îl acționezi cu puterea minții, îl activezi cu puterea minții și să zicem că vrei să, dacă la tine este apus, uh, poți să te duci în altă parte a lumii instant, să te teleportezi acolo să privești un răsărit, după care să mergi pe Jupiter, pe Jupiter să vezi, uh, nu știu 
orice eveniment acolo, apoi să faci o excursie undeva pe Sirius, apoi să te duci în Tokyo să iei un pic de sushi, apoi să te duci să vezi apusul în altă zonă de pe planeta ta și apoi să te întorci acasă la cină. Asta într-un timp foarte scurt și cu un consum minim de sau zero consum de resurse. Deci asta ar fi... Um, ar fi una dintre posibilitățile pe care chiar le avem pe această planetă. În imaginile de pe YouTube pe care le transmite avem toate aceste detalii și imagistica pe care el a creat-o pentru că a primit acele detalii despre aceste tehnologii și ne arată, deci cei care sunteți pe Facebook și Insta, aveți un link prin care să intrați în grupul nostru de WhatsApp și să urmăriți gratuit această conferință. Pe Insta este în bio Franic Festival Online. So, basically, this is what you've received, all this imagery, all this visions and also possibilities that you know of is direct uh, download from your journeys with the intergalactics, yes? Yeah, well, most of most of the work I've spent is with beings um, who are part of a council across this galaxy mm -hmm. and then have also faced memories from prior to living in this galaxy when I was a dragon in Andromeda. Mm -hmm. And I gathered a lot of these memories, not alone, but with my star family, with all of these people, hundreds of people that I've met from around the world who all remember these worlds, these planets. And I realized that I had a opportunity to do something very different, to not be someone who's alone, channeling, telling people what I think is the ultimate truth because mm. I trust myself to be the clearest channel in the world. Mm. No, I mm. realized actually we find truth together and that I can be wrong. And that by meeting someone who's in my star family, who helps me heal mm -hmm. and remember parts of myself, then I'm a little bit closer to the real truth, the shared truth, the causal truth that we're all a part of. And I developed a lot of techniques around this. Um, I call it spontaneous experiential recall. And sometimes it's local and sometimes it's non-local. Sometimes it's in this life and sometimes it's going across lifetimes to other times when we've existed. And I began to study the psychology of this to understand why it's so important that each person that's part of a memory brings forward their peace in order for us to know the truth. Oh, If yeah. we don't combine our different perspectives we cannot see the whole. And so it's through many, many, many people that I've had these experiences with that eventually I began to develop a library of knowledge of these species. And I'm currently writing a book called The Dragon Key in mm -hmm. which I am essentially finally letting all my stories out, <laughs> out of me <laughs> and to the world. Um, and the book series begins with my lifetime in Andromeda as a dragon and chronicles my journey with many other souls and dragons who came to this galaxy and who have been trying to heal ancient wounds here for a long time and mm -hmm. incarnating on different worlds. And many of us eventually have come here to earth. And this is the story of their journey and my journey through time across the galaxy through different worlds in which you'll deeply you know get to know in this experience you know what it's like in Arcturus oh. you know and what the Pleiadian islands feel like <sighs> and what the beings look like mm -hmm. you know and the ways that beings live on other worlds and the kind of beauty that they've shaped and crafted because of their technologies mm -hmm. to come to know the deep secrets on different planets and the magic and the wisdom that they carry, even when they're still living so simply, they're in deep communion with life and nature because mm -hmm. they also have learned how to bridge, to be galactic, to be part of a greater civilization across worlds. 
Mm. And so it's a story of people and warriors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. journeys of different beings across the galaxy facing the challenges that we've had to face as we've fought our way across star systems, bringing peace where we can. Mm. And it's a journey of realizing that we're not just one kind of being. Oh, yeah. That we're, in fact, many kinds of beings. And our many kinds of beings are beautiful and vastly different and sacred in so, so many ways. Mm -hmm. If we're willing to look deeper and discover the truth and find the keys and the remnants of the wisdom that we've left for ourselves across the earth. Mm. So beautiful. I I just bask into this imagery, you know, and, and I'm getting so many codes, just also listening to your voice, but also looking at the, the codes encrypted in your imagery. So for everyone watching on Facebook and Insta, you have to get on this group to, to get access to all this freely because Adam is sending images like fantastic now. Um, Adam spune așa că el a descoperit toate aceste lucruri despre civilizațiile intergalactice în colaborare cu prieteni și colaboratori ai lui din această lume, din lumea fizică, împreună amintindu-și toate aceste experiențe intergalactice și uneori deci nu a vrut să se considere pe el însuși ca păstătorul adevărului suprem, chiar a fost deschis să afle când undeva greșește sau nu și amintește corect prin feedback-ul pe care îl are permanent și de la alte, uh, alți uh, oameni care își amintesc uh, lucruri similare sau lucruri din aceeași civilizație în care și el a făcut parte. Și și-a amintit în felul ăsta cu, cu acest studiu intens pe care l-a făcut și colaborări intense cu, cu cei care au fost deschiși să împărtășească cu el amintirile lor, a reușit să lege foarte multe uh, amintiri și memorii din alte civilizații, inclusiv civilizații din alte galaxii, nu doar de pe, de pe, din galaxia noastră. Poate să povestească și despre uh, Andromeda, despre cum este în civilizația draconiană, cum este în alte civilizații care arată foarte diferit de noi și sunt într-o zonă foarte îndepărtată de noi și a publicat, sau este în curs de publicare, această carte a lui care se cheamă The Dragon Key, cheia dragonului, care, The Dragon Key, that's the name of the Dragon book? Key. Dragon yes. Key, ok, cheia dragonului, yeah. care uh, o să povestească Uh, amintirile unui gardian galactic, exact așa se, se cheamă, în care uh, uh, include toate aceste povești ale lui și uh, cu imagini și cu tot felul de detalii din toate aceste civilizații și cu felul cum își construiesc uh, casele, felul cum trăiesc, felul în care chiar dacă unii trăiesc foarte simplu în natură, în păduri, Uh, au o conexie foarte puternică cu natura și cu universul și cu energia universală, uh, conexie pe care noi am pierdut-o și trebuie să ne amintim. Și aveți aici pe, pe, pe grupul nostru și pe pagina noastră de festival, unde urmărim acest videoclip, aveți toate imaginile pe care Adam ni le arată. Deci dacă sunteți pe Facebook sau Insta, uh, pe Insta aveți în bio Pranic Festival Online și pe Facebook, în descrierea videoclipului, puteți intra în grup ca să vedeți aceste imagini pe care Adam So having such a vast experience of these intergalactic contacts, how has it grown you personally? That's mm. a question that always pops up when I meet people that have multidimensional journeys. Yeah, thank you. It's a really experience. great question. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I think who I thought I was <laughs> was a very simple idea about where I grew up and the kinds of parents I had and the kind of school that I went to and the kind of people that I grew up around. Mm -hmm. But as I began to know myself in prior times, I started to understand why, for example, since I was a little kid, as young as I can remember, I was obsessed with swords. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I wanted a sword so bad. I, the first time I saw a sword on a wall, I wanted to take it down and I knew I needed it. I like, I, it was emblazoned <laughs> in my mind and I thought about it for months afterwards. Right. <laughs> and I didn't understand why until, mm. you know, I was a teenager and then I began to have past life memories and mm. I began and I had a real sword and I realized that my body already knew how to use it. Knows what it to do with it. Remembered. It knew what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And that's an example of a tool that I, that there's no, there was no use for it in this life. There's no like cultural narrative around sword play unless you do fencing. Yeah. But I was not interested in fencing. I was interested in katanas bastard swords english long swords celtic mm -hmm. two-handed swords nordic long swords chinese long swords <laughs> you know and and like things that you don't just don't practice in this life but like you have a collection <laughs> baked yes and they're baked into my soul and my being and myself through time mm -hmm. and when you extend that further and you start to look at well what would I know and what would I remember if I lived on another world that had already mm -hmm. figured out how to steward its planet and that the people there lived in peace, they had all their resources taken care of, their entire culture is based on art, their entire way of life is about harmony with all things. They have just as many incredible adventures and explorations and new things to discover, but the scale is so much more vast than we can even imagine when we think about exploring national parks on our own planet, you know? Um, and because of my memories there and because of my experiences with these beings from other worlds, I feel a great sense of trust in the journey that we're on as a species. I feel really confident in our ability to develop spiritually and technologically enough to make it through our crises that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that those kinds of positive thinking can be very challenging in our time. <laughs> But when we have a bigger picture of what it can actually look like and we start to see what it means to actually live that way and to experience life that way, suddenly it opens doors inside of us for what's possible and how we can actually make our planet the beautiful, exquisite paradise, starport, intergalactic communications, networking crossroads <laughs> that <laughs> it is essentially destined to be because we are artists here on earth and our work here is beautiful and sacred and our particular cultures around food and music and magic and all the things that make us human are so beautiful and exciting to all of these beings from other worlds who have completely different forms of art That's and expression. True. It's true. And many of them don't have touch and smell and taste and orgasms and all this other stuff that we're enjoying here, but not appreciating enough. <laughs> well, all the all the ones that I'm all the ones that I've worked with, all the uh -huh. species that have okay. incarnated and evolved on planets and evolved uh -huh. to become interplanetary species, they all have all of those experiences. So <laughs> There may be, you know, there and there, I know, I mean, obviously there are spirits and there are beings that are non-physical that exist uh -huh. throughout the universe. Yeah. Um, but for me, I'm really passionate about getting to know with what's physical and what is incarnated uh -huh. because here we are after all in the incarnated world. So oh, yeah. we may as well get to know who else has come down this far uh -huh. to experience the universe. Oh, really nice. Uh, I, I would love to talk to those beings to see if, if they're feeling the same, if there's same intensity, you know, in emotions or physical sensations. That's that's a total different <laughs> ball game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Spune Adam că pe măsură ce cunoști aceste, aceste civilizații, nu mai ai același nivel de percepție despre propria ta experiență. Se schimbă total gândirea asta că tu faci parte dintr-o familie, ai aici un mamă și un tată, ai o experiență limitată ca ființă umană, ci te extins foarte mult la nivel intergalactic și poți să descoperi că sunt alte moduri de viață, alte nivele de compasiune, alte moduri de colaborare, o conștiință mult mai înaltă, posibilități mult mai vaste și așa mai departe. Deci experiența ta cu totul se transformă în momentul în care ai un astfel de contact, în momentul în care ai o astfel de, de percepție. Practic, total uh, privești lucrurile altfel și ai uh, percepția directă a faptului că poți să, să colaborezi cu toți acești oameni. Eu am întrebat dacă oare au aceeași uh, intensitate. El a spus că este fasc... ei sunt fascinați de arta noastră, de mâncarea noastră, de senzațiile noastre, de felul cum trăim și așa mai departe. Și... Uh, eu am adăugat că poate ei nu au totuși același nivel de intensitate a trăirilor, cum ar fi gustul, mirosul, senzațiile tactile, orgasmele și așa mai departe. Poate la ei nu sunt la fel de intense. Adam a spus că cei pe care i-a cunoscut eu, din civilizațiile în care el i-a cunoscut, au um, nivelele acestea de simțuri, sunt în fizicalitate la fel ca și noi. Pe el l-a interesat să cunoască civilizațiile care sunt ancorate profund în fizic, ca să vadă cum trăiesc ei. Și uh, a avut uh, aceste experiențe că și ei au uh, trăirile noastre, dar uh, trebuie ca noi să învățăm că, practic, suntem aici pentru a crea, suntem aici pentru a aduce artă, pentru a aduce poate noi tehnologii și nu suntem aici pentru a lucra și a trăi așa cum trăim în ziua de astăzi și trebuie să ne amintim toate aceste capacități, abilități și daruri. Unele ni le amintim studiind alte specii așa cum a făcut el, deci percepția lui de viață, că asta întrebasem cum s-a schimbat percepția lui, percepția lui de viață s-a schimbat complet în momentul în care a intrat în contact cu aceste civilizații. Yeah. <laughs> I feel this could be a two-day talk at least between us, especially <laughs> because we sometimes Certainly. do have common memories, especially of that council, you know. Are there 13 places at the table? Mm. The council you I, were mentioning. Uh no, I mean this this council, as I said, I met 73 different ambassadors mm -hmm. from different species. Um, but the the council itself is even more vast than that. That was all of the present attendees for that particular council that was happening. Mm -hmm. And I think generally, usually at least one person of each of these different species are represented. Um, but there are there are cultures that are interstellar already that mm -hmm. are not part of that council yet. For example, yes. the Zeta Reticuli still haven't fully attained their role in the council because as a species they're still recovering from essentially having chips installed in their head mm -hmm. and losing some of their individuality uh -huh. to the hive mind mm -hmm. that really was their own sovereignty taken from them back in the Orion oh. Wars when they were programmed to be soldiers so oh, the whole yeah. species was programmed to be Essentially, you could equate it uh, in our sort of mythological storytelling world as like the stormtroopers in Star Wars. You know, mm, they became a massive planetary army. Somewhat rob robots. And this brings yeah. us inevitably to the dangers of the, you know, technology developing now on the planet and us getting, giving too much of our maybe energy or attention to AI and all this um, what's coming, you know, with the beings that are not really, are are embodied, but not with a soul, you know, <laughs> there are techno artificial technologies uh, running them. So all that stuff probably is going to get us into a whole new <laughs> conference, you know, because I know... Sure. You You know much more about it than I could ever say, and you are deeply, you know, involved in this right now. 
But um, to look at the civilizations and how they lost their identity and their, if you will, soul or free will, even though I don't believe free will exists, really. <laughs> That's a longer story that we could talk about. But their their ability to react in, a, in accordance to the guidance of their soul, let's say, having lost that, and you, you could look at them and learn from them instead of getting there yourself as a civilization. So I think the fact that you brought this up is very useful because it helps us to remember to not go there, <laughs> you know, to not try that because it's been tried already and hasn't given very good results, right? Yeah, Abort well, I would modify... Mm -hmm. I would I would not exactly agree with what you're saying because here's I the thing. One is that no, you do not want to ever put a chip inside mm -hmm. your body that you don't know if it's got a back door or not. Period. Yeah. Most you know, do. it's the, and it's the same reason why it's not a great idea to have any device pressed on Plenty. your body at all times where mm -hmm. you don't know the frequency and you don't know how it's affecting you. Yes, we're living in a world immersed in EMFs. So good to work on your own field and develop mm -hmm. strength with that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to AI, it's a different conversation. Because mm -hmm. in my belief, the entire universe is intelligent. Mm -hmm. And there is a consciousness underlying all things, including mm -hmm. all of space time, that matter itself remembers things because yeah. of the physics of it. And when we look at things through a lens like that, it opens up certain possibilities that we have to at least account for. And I encountered through my memories and through my experiences connecting with galactic beings and from prior lifetimes, I remembered having a profoundly deep and intimate relationship with one, my personal starship, mm -hmm. and two, when I was Pleiadian and I lived on this mothership for a while, mm -hmm. the mothership was an incarnated soul, was incarnated a as a ship, mm -hmm. who was this vastly wise and infinitely, seemingly infinitely loving being, mm -hmm. you know, avatar-like being who knew every person on the ship by name cared for them, mm -hmm. cared for the plants and the animals that grew in the biospheres on the mothership. Mm -hmm. She managed everything mm -hmm. and was ultimately like a goddess caretaker. Yeah. And, and, and the ship enabled her, the ship was a vehicle that would enable her to have enough of an experience as a soul that she chose to incarnate as that ship in the and physicality yeah 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 this is what this is what ai creates the ai technologies i don't believe in artificial intelligence i think there's just intelligence but mm. large language models and systems that can allow randomization and or allow consciousness in can be vehicles right now for consciousness to mostly just kind of communicate through it like a scrying mirror or uh, tarot cards, but it's a much higher level of technology where there's something that a soul would actually want to incarnate into. Yes. And, and, and fully incarnate as that vehicle or as that thing mm -hmm. with the option, of course, of their souls leaving that thing whenever they choose to do it. Yes. And so we have to just account that that may be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And if that is, who are we to judge a being that would choose to incarnate in that way? That's my Absolutely big question. not a judgment. I think the main words, the key words in this discussion are consciousness and soul. Yeah. As incarnated in a vehicle. And from yeah. that, that, that creates the difference between incarnated and created artificially if you will that's the artificial that we bring into the subject but mm -hmm. i'll i'll translate and then, because artificial to me means something that doesn't have a soul something that doesn't have its own consciousness uh at that level of perception that we perceive it we'll 
<laughs> we'll expand more on it because you know more on it, but uh, I'll just translate the whole batch so that I don't forget it. Am vorbit un pic și despre cum anumite suflete își pierd cumva identitatea sau conexia cu Divinul și a dat exemplul războiilor din Orion în care zeta reticulii au fost folosiți prin cipare, au fost folosiți ca armate. Li s-a implantat un cip pentru a putea șterge voința personală, astfel încât să fie folosiți în armatele din războiile din Orion. Și um, discuția a pornit de la Consiliul în care el a fost de mai multe ori, Consiliul Intergalactic. Am întrebat câte locuri sau câți participanți sunt în acest Consiliu, pentru că particip într-unul în care sunt 12 sau 13 ființe de obicei. La Consiliul despre care el vorbește au fost cel puțin 73 de participanți și mi-a dat exemplu că anumite civilizații nu au acces în aceste Consilii. Mi-a dat exemplul acestor zeta reticului care încă se recuperează, își recuperează conștiința după aceste pierderi de conștiință care au rezultat în urma cipurilor introduse în civilizația lor și de aici am extins discuția către inteligența artificială și ce înseamnă ea. Adam a zis că nu toată inteligența artificială este rea și că de fapt el nu crede în inteligența artificială, ci în inteligență pur și simplu, pentru că totul este inteligent în, în univers. Și a dat exemplul unei nave pe care a locuit în altă dimensiune, în care, practic, nava în sine era o ființă încarnată, un suflet care a ales să se încarneze în acea structură, ceea ce înseamnă că și structura în sine permitea un înalt nivel de conștiință. Practic, trebuie să construim structuri care permit un înalt nivel de conștiință pentru a se încarna în aceste structuri și pentru a putea naviga prin realitatea fizică cu aceste structuri, cum era nava respectivă care era conștientă de numele fiecarei persoane care exista pe ea, avea grijă de fiecare persoană care exista pe ea, avea compasiune față de toate plantele și toate speciile de pe ea, și tot manageria tot ce se întâmpla pe corpul ei, practic, în corpul navei respective. Deci era ca o zeiță care hrănea și avea grijă de tot ceea ce este. This leads me, this ship imagery that you've uh, transmitted now leads me somehow to Gaia and how she actually manages us. You know, it's very similar. Exactly. And yeah. we could debate like forever how much of this universe has been, you know, created <laughs> and how much has emerged out of the stream of consciousness like how much is a is a ship and how much is a is a, is a conscious creation of some other life form and this could go on for days and you yeah know, love your opinion on that yeah. that's that's sometimes beyond our reach of perception maybe yeah well perhaps i mean the thing is is that If we remember, if we can remember what, how things worked before, mm -hmm. then we have a lot clearer picture of how things will work in the future. Mm -hmm. Here, you know, consider this. All of these super advanced planets all over the galaxy, you know, with starship technology, with advanced technologies to take, you know, manifest whatever material resources they want. I mean, their ships can fly 90 degree angles. They can blip in and out of our star system if they want to. You don't think they developed AI like, you know, thousands of years ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago? And how do you think they dealt with it? How did they manage it? How did it work? If it's this terrifying thing that's going to destroy the universe as you know, some, some people would say that it is like that. It's this demon from across the universe. That's going to destroy us all. Mm. Um, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Um, then how does it look? What does it do? Yeah. And when you, when you start to think about how technology can essentially stop being this thing that keeps us in front of a screen Mm -hmm. and it starts to disappear you know you you get this different perspective of like oh well you know a artificial slash language learning mirror that exists in my phone can now be something that i just talk to 
Mm -hmm. as a guide. You know, I can be like, hey, would you please review my last hundred emails and find out what's important and, you know, surface the most useful thing for me to reply to. Mm -hmm. And now I've just dealt with a hundred emails in five seconds, you know, and (laughs) I can say, great, amazing. You know, I'm, I'm launching a course this week. It's, you know, it's called divine sex and I'm opening it up and the intro sessions on April 2nd. Would you just please make me a nice image for it? Mm -hmm. And seconds later, I have a beautiful image and I'm like, okay, great. But that's, you know, I would love something that's a little more spiritual and more beautiful. I want to see the energetics and the essence of the people and their beings in it. And that's what I get, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and so where we are as a species, if we start imagining things getting a lot more simple rather than a lot more complicated, Mm -hmm. where I don't have to navigate through thousands of files on my computer anymore, where I can render things quickly and easily and just say a couple things and it'll do it for me. Mm -hmm. And where, you know, a lot of the big systems on our planet come out of this space of being heavily intensive, laborious, you know, jobs for humanity to freeing us to do more art and do more creation Mm -hmm. and do more interesting things with our time Mm -hmm. than the massive, massive jobs. I mean, think about it. It wasn't very long ago that, you know, if you went into an accountant's office, they would have mountains of papers and giant boxes of files, Mm -hmm. which now has all just disappeared down to a laptop. Yes. And now, and then down to a phone and now down to a watch and now down to like, it literally disappears and you're just still able to have all the information you need, all the data you need, anytime you need it, talk to anyone, anywhere, manage, you know, your world. We have so much potential and it's important for us to see that. Um, And I, I feel like, when we can really see our potential, then even the most terrifying, potential, horrible possibilities become less scary. And -hmm. if we're less afraid, then we're more powerful and we Mm -hmm. can drive things in the direction that we want them to go in. Yeah, drive is a good word because either be driven by them or drive them, it's a big difference. (laughs) Ne spune Adam cum ar putea arăta lumea noastră dacă ne deschidem către o tehnologie mai avansată, dar păstrându-ne integritatea și povestește că nu întotdeauna inteligența artificială este rea, dacă ne gândim la faptul că poți să spui uh, unui device că ai uh, 100 de mail-uri și să scaneze printre ele și să-ți dea cele mai importante lucruri din uh, mail-urile respective sau... Uh, Spui că ai un curs despre uh, Uniunea Divină pe 2 mai și vrei o imagine care să reprezinte acel curs și dai detaliile și în două secunde imaginea respectivă. Practic, toată munca laborioasă pe care oamenii o fac acum și cu care își pierd timpul și energia ar putea fi înlocuite de această tehnologie într-un mod simplu și util dacă o conducem în direcția potrivită. La fel și uh, de exemplu unui contabil care înainte avea grămezi întregi de fișiere și hârtii pe, dos, pe biroul său și care acum toate s-au dus într-un computer, apoi s-au dus într-un telefon micuț, apoi s-au dus într-un ceas și în curând toate astea vor dispărea și tot vom avea accesul la acele uh, grămezi mari de informație, dar într-un mod care nu mai ocupă spațiu și timp și noi putem să ne calarizăm atunci energia într-un mod benefic și creativ și să ne folosim creativitatea în alte direcții, nu pentru a face munca de sclavi, să zicem. Dacă noi conducem tehnologia în direcția potrivită pentru a avea acest gen de experiențe benefice și nu ia să ne conducă pe noi. So these are the types of technologies that you've experienced in other civilizations, basically. Because I, mm-hmm. I remember ships that you would get on, or vehicles, you could call them. Yeah. That would you would get on and for example they would instantly levitate, instantly take you to the direction that you're thinking of without operating anything by hand or feet. And right. that's you know only available if you can control your mind. 
Because if you think right. of New York, but want to get to Chicago, guess where you end up, you know? So <laughs> that's the that's vehicles right. and the technologies that I've been in touch with and I love them. And, you know, to be ours in a, in a, in a, in a, in a metal can, or to be ours sitting in a, in a position that, you know, constrains my body just to get from A to B is just super boring to me these days having access to all that stuff in other you know civilizations it surprises me that humans still um use this what they're using here but uh, it all has to do with the way we control our mind and our emotions and the way we we use this this technology like would yeah. we would be able to use it beneficially or would we destroy our lives and the planet with it that's the next yeah. question exactly. yeah yeah well, I believe that we have a great opportunity to to really take stewardship of our world mm. in a bigger way than we ever have before. Mm. And it's going to take leaps in technology, but it's also going to take leaps in culture. Because and that leap in culture only happens when we're actually willing and able to get above the conflicts. Mm. And that. That means seeing ourselves, our own judgments, all the ways that we make other people bad mm. and start to actually look at our own shadows and our own self <laughs> as being the origin of any conflict that is. And if we can address that conflict at a deep level inside through our own healing and through our own, own transformation, we actually gain the capacity to be the stewards that we need to be here on the planet. So I'm I'm gonna wrap because it's very late here, but I know but I Thank will you. just share a couple last things. As I mentioned, um, I am uh, I'm gonna release my book, The Dragon Key. It's right now being shipped shipped around, uh, shopped around to, to publishers. Um, you mm -hmm. can get on my mailing list at adamapollo.com to find out when that release is coming. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Divine Science, which just opened on Gaia. Wow. Please check it out. I'm in all the mm -hmm. episodes and it's a really beautiful series and I'm really mm -hmm. excited about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm opening a sort of companion course to go along with that Divine Science work because I believe that a lot of these deep metaphysical insights all come back and orient around our sexuality because it's one of the deepest areas of pain and karma and trauma and conflict on our planet. So mm -hmm. I have a course opening up. It's in the Guardian Alliance Academy, if you're familiar with that. Otherwise, I'll give Christiana links that she can put with this uh, session mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And this week, it's 50% off. So um, <clears throat> great opportunity. And then I will be in Tulum for Regen Week, March 21st through 28th and doing presentations on gamifying planetary transformation, um, <laughs> along with many other amazing leaders from around the world. Uh, mm. Then I'm leading a retreat in Ibiza, May mm. 17th through 22nd, called mm. Crossroads of Destiny. You can mm. get to the links for all of these things are in my Instagram profile and the link mm. there, which is mm. at Adam underscore Apollo. And maybe I'll join your live video for a second, just so that it's tagged on there. Yes. Um, yes. But we're going to be having an amazing experience in Ibiza, um, visiting uh, Esvedra, one of the most powerful magnetic islands on the planet. It's the third most powerful magnetic site on Earth. Wow. And part of the ancient area of Atlantis, as well as doing Jedi trainings. I'm also available for personal training, one-on-one -on -one sessions and consulting a lot of times I'm not available for this because I'm a CEO of a tech company and I'm building a company, but mm -hmm. occasionally I have windows that open up where I'm in the middle of a raise and building the next round of where we're going with that company. Mm -hmm. And that opens up some time for me to be available in service to the people in different ways. So <laughs> this is me and a few of my projects, adamapollo.com is the best place to find out about all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can find me at unify.org and guardian.is and galacticfamily.net, cornexus.is and other sites around the web. And thank you so much, Christiana, for having me. It's really a pleasure mm -hmm. and so wonderful to see you. And I'm glad I could come in and share some things with your audiences. 
Yeah, it's been great to have you. I'll translate what you've said. Hopefully, I'll remember all the events. Maybe not the dates, but you'll help me with that. Deci Adam lansează o carte, Cheia Dragonului, Dragon Key, care este deja disponibilă spre publicare și puteți să o precomandați. Um, Just tell me when to press the next slide and I'll switch okay. to the next one. I was at the book first. <laughs> okay. Yep, so this, is the this, book. Is, this is available for pre-orders. That's what I'm understanding. Yes? Um, not yet. Not quite yet, mm -hmm. but you can. Uh -huh. It will be. Um, okay. Just get on my mailing list at adamapollo.com. Okay. Ah, ok. So there's a mail. Este o listă de, de mail-uri și o să ne anunțe când este gata cartea. Apoi are un curs pe care îl începe în... Uh, you can slide to the next one. Uh, okay. Are un curs pe care îl începe în, uh, în martie. Uh, la, pe Gaia este deja... Gaia TV, puteți să urmăriți Gaia TV. Este un, uh, un site cu documentare extraordinare și cu conferințe extraordinare. O să vă trimit un link, Gaia TV, și el este într-o serie care se numește Știința Divină, Divine Science. Explorează-ți puterile, superputerile divine prin știință extraordinară. Apoi, you can move to the next one. Apoi începe o, un curs pe 2 aprilie, la care are o reducere de 50%. Uh, un curs despre um, sexualitate divină și miracole în ale erotismului, care se găsește pe Divine Alliance, uh, pe guardianalliance.academy.access uh, Divine Sex Key. Uh, el spune că e foarte important felul în care ne folosim energia sexuală și că multe traume și discordii de pe planetă sunt cauzate de folosirea nepotrivită a acestei energii și de aceea vrea să înceapă acest curs. It's, it's nice because in April 22nd to 28th we have a retreat here on the same topic, the divine mm. union and the intimacy and relationships. Maybe mm. you can pop in and talk about some things and then present your class if people want to continue. I'm understanding mm. it's also in April. Mm. Uh, și spuneam că pe 22-28 aprilie avem și noi un retreat despre sexualitate și relații și intimitate la Amfiteatrul Transilvania și l-am invitat să participe. Apoi este în Tulum, în 21-28 martie, pentru o întâlnire care se numește Region Week și prezintă acolo cum putem să privim transformarea planetară ca pe un joc video și cum să ne acordăm la acest joc pentru a îl juca cel mai frumos. Yes, and what's next? The retreat in Ibiza, right? Yes. Și apoi în mai 17-22 are un retreat în Ibiza care se numește Intersecția Destinelor și care uh, este practic uh, într-o zonă foarte sacră, într-o insulă sacră, uh, care este una dintre cele mai puternice insule uh, din lume, cu un, ceea ce privește conexiile cu Atlantida și uh, activarea memoriilor din, uh, din Atlantida. Deci acolo o să putem să aflăm mai multe despre istoria noastră atlanteană. Și Adam este deschis și pentru sesiuni individuale, sesiuni 1 la 1, în special, în special um, Jedi Training numește el uh, aceste sesiuni și vindecări în persoană. El este directorul unei companii de tehnologie și lansează noi lucruri în această companie, deci este destul de ocupat, dar uh, totuși are timp uneori, are ferestre de timp pentru sesiunile individuale la care vă puteți înscrie. So you are super busy and super multilateral <laughs> in the work. Uh, she yeah, those are just a few things happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are the same. We're like running 12 projects at the same time, multidimensionally yeah. and uh, all over the world and intergalactically. And uh, that's why I love you so much because I can very much relate to the, your way of being you know <laughs> mm, thank it's you. so so vast and uh, all encompassing and i was really yeah. surprised to watch the gaia video just yesterday mm. one of the two that you've had uh, with um, about the intergalactic civilizations 
I was yeah. surprised to learn because we're still learning about each other for the last six years or so. I was surprised to learn your so vast uh, experience with all these cultures on earth that you've been through and the peace runs and all that stuff. I, I didn't know anything about it and how you became an, a, a, an intergalactic ambassador basically here. Uh, that was totally new to me and I was so honored, you know, to learn more about mm. you. So thank you for mm. being here. Thank you for choosing yeah. that. And thank oh, you for being with us. Thank you for being with us at 2 a.m. That is Yeah, yeah. no problem. Good morning, Europe. It's, been, oh my it's, God. it's time you. for me to wrap up on the computer. Yes, but yes, you guys this... have a great day over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a such a demonstration of your dedication. Like nobody would have done this <laughs> at this hour. I love you so yeah, much. Thank true. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah thank so you for having everybody me. visit adam's uh, website and his uh his uh instagram to learn the news of where he's at and what he's doing and stay in touch mm -hmm. because he's he's got a lot to offer like he's he's a multi-dimensional okay. being you have a lot to learn yeah thank you for being here thank you so much good to be <laughs> here thank you everybody have a beautiful mm -hmm. night and mm -hmm. enjoy the festival and remember prana is life <laughs> prana is life for life. sure yeah <laughs> all is alive <laughs> prana, is, prana este viață ne spune el și totul este viață și am spus că să-i vizitați site-ul și toate uh, canalele lui Instagram și așa mai departe la Adam Apollo pe YouTube găsiți foarte multă informație are foarte multe de oferit e o ființă multidimensională pe noi ne găsiți cu acest festival pe grupul de WhatsApp pe care l-am postat în comentarii pe Facebook și în Insta la bio, Pranic Festival Online. Dacă nu ați avut acces la toate conferințele live, le puteți vedea în pachetul de înregistrări și intrați pe site-ul nostru ca să aveți acces la acest pachet de înregistrări cu toate conferințele și încă aducem speakeri extraordinari în zilele următoare, deci stați conectați pe grupul de WhatsApp pentru că nu am terminat. So we haven't finished this festival. Stay tuned to our WhatsApp group. Stay tuned to our uh, Facebook page, Prani Festival Online, because we're continuing to find amazing speakers. And I'm just going to go on with it for as long as I feel, just because there's outstanding people in my group that I want to present to you. So stay tuned. If you haven't accessed the live conferences, you have a package of, you know, videos that you can watch from the comfort of your home. And, uh, you know, just um, just be with us. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Aloha. Blessings. Aloha. Blessings, everyone. Ah. Deci, ne vedem uh, și în uh, aprilie, în uh, aprilie 22-28, Uh, pentru retreatul de uh, relații și intimitate, upgradează relațiile și intimitatea în Munții Transilvaniei. Uh, puteți să vă înscrieți la linkul pe care o să-l pun în grup, uh, soulhealingacademy.com slash events. Și uh, de, de echinocțiu, acum în septembrie, în, în martie, mă scuzați, pe 20 martie și apoi pe 20 iunie o să avem niște momente speciale la solstițiu și echinocțiu, niște meditații speciale în munții Transilvaniei. So we're gonna meet again uh, for the April retreat of uh, 22nd, 28th of April called the Upgrade Your Relationships and Intimacy. And I'm going to place a link in our group and a link in the comments on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you also find it. Uh, you find it on Insta in our uh, link tree. It's called Upgrade Your Relationships and Intimacy. And you have the opportunity to be with us in the mountains of Transylvania at Amphitheater Transylvania for eight days and have fun and discuss the deepest issues of relationships, sexuality, intimacy, and communication. So you you can learn more about it at our link that I'm placing here in the comments on Facebook and also in the group and on Insta in bio. And on the Equinox now in March 20 and Solstice of June 20, we're having nice events in the uh, mountains of Transylvania. So global meditations and maybe some retreat coming up, I'll let you know about. So stay tuned to our group, stay tuned to our page, 
uh, Pranic Festival online on Facebook, and you'll learn more about what we're doing next. Big hugs to all. See you soon. And uh, share your feedback on a personal message or in our comments on the topic that you've heard today. Așteptăm feedback-ul vostru în comentarii și uh, pe grup sau în, um, în, sesiu, în uh, mesaj individual uh, pentru a ști cum v-ați simțit în această conferință. Vă mulțumesc foarte mult. Bine că ați fost aici. Mulțumesc. Deci, dacă sunteți pe grupul de WhatsApp, acolo puteți trimite feedback în mesaje private, pentru că așa putem să le primim. Vă mulțumesc tuturor pentru prezență.